Podcast Rise! Welcome to Lost in Appalachian Mon episode 44 of Lost in Translation Mon. I'm May. And I'm Jay. And this week we watched Atmon episode 44, Chasing the Fugitive Bootmon. What were your favourite bits, Jay? You know what? It was a hardcore filler episode, and so I didn't have as many as I would usually have. Mm. It had cute moments and stuff that I'd pick out, but on the whole, I would not even list like the episode's plot in there, right? Yeah. I On one hand, I like the emergency escape program. It's funny. Its implementation was funny. It, the best version of it was in the outro bit, when they're giving the proverb of the day or whatever, and Gatchmon and Haru both have it. Yeah. Um, I think the useless versions of the, like, ultimate Atmon was pretty funny. Yeah, I like how they were all different enough so it wasn't repeating the same joke. Like, we had Ujimon, who was just standardly feeling useless. And then we had Globemon, who was a useless punk. Well, because and then there was Shutmon, who was just kind of hidden. It, more importantly, he's a punk in the same way that Haru was pretending to be a punk that one time. Yeah. So maybe he picked it up at that time. Yeah, maybe. It's, it's cute. It's cute. I like it. Um, yeah, so that was that was all right, and we we introduced the idea of the Atmon Kindergarten, and that was all right, and I liked I like I always like seeing um a, what's his name caught up man yeah, and he's an astronaut this time he's an astronaut you mean an astronaut that's very good I like that uh but look other than that I can't think of anything that really stood out as like good everything else was either fine or I was like why is this happening well I liked how. Entomon couldn't become useless because he's just so optimistic and so always on top of everything. Well, I so mean, it's of really all nice. Of them, entertainment is the least useful. I know, but he's like the most optimistic, so he was able to be brought down by this depression that everyone else was brought through. It, well, it, I, I would have liked it if it's like, okay, you know, as as a function of how media works, it won't feel this way. No, it's just Astrid going, Haha, I'm really optimistic, so I guess that won't work on me. Yeah, and that's and that's really great. No, I just don't um, think it's that great. <laughs> well, I like it. I personally thought that was one of my highlights, but there, there wasn't really much that happened this episode. It did feel like pretty standard filler because guess what? The uh, the whole bit of the episode where Bootmon is using his emergency program that happened in the first couple of minutes happens again at the end. So it's almost in a way where you could have taken the chunk in the middle out and it would be the exact same. And if you think about it, what this episode establishes is that the kids are looking for him, and by the end, they are still looking for him, and they've gained no new knowledge. So, if you cut from the end of the last episode to the beginning of the next episode, I bet that you wouldn't notice anything. And you know what I'm waiting for? Yeah? I'm waiting for Eugene and Hajime to exchange evil looks at each other. <laughs> That's and what Hajime's I'm waiting for. eyes go red. Oh, no. Um, because it's such a trap. It's like it's it, it's got to be because they they Leviathan literally says it was his plan. So and there's a there's an argument to be made that oh yeah you know you got a piece of information you found out that Apliyama was like suspended or whatever, but yeah. we already knew that Eri didn't want to be part of it anymore as long as Leviathan was leading it and she's yeah, going to go off on her own. Yeah, I guess if we're moving to negatives now, I do not like how all of a sudden she seems to, I guess almost care about Apliyama because she said a couple of episodes ago. I have to leave Apliyama, but I'm fine with that. And this one, she doesn't mention it. Sure, she says, look, Leviathan's the most important, but then I'll go back to Apliyama, which is just, it's strange considering Leviathan has Apliyama, so maybe if they defeat Leviathan, Apliyama will be no more. No, the idea is, I assume, that Leviathan, no, like, Leviathan is running L Corp as a company, but if you took Leviathan out, the company would still exist. Yeah. It would presumably be less successful because it's not being secretly run by an AI who has a grip on the world, but it's the way that, like, you know, capitalism and economic momentum work is that even if someone took over it now, it'd probably be fairly successful into the mm. future. So it would be fine. Yeah, so I just want to say my other negative is the fact that I forgot to mention at the start of the episode that we're recording on Skype again. So apologies for bad audio quality again. Hopefully it will be back to normal next week when both of us are not contagious. Exactly. And contagious to each other. Like usually when we're both sick, we will still record in the same room. Because we both have the same illness. Yeah, but this time we've both got like terrible, terrible illnesses, but they're both different from each other. 
So we're going to not do that. And also, my voice is still not here. Yeah, it'll come back one day, I hope. Yeah. So I still sound a bit like a 14-year-old boy. Um, so I look and normal. sound like a 14 Yeah, I, I, I look and sound like one now. But yeah, so as for negative bits about the episode, like, it wasn't a terrible episode. Like, there are a few things I could nitpick, but it just didn't feel like the standard that we've had these last few episodes. I feel like this is the worst episode we've had in at least, like, maybe 10 episodes. One of the problems is how absolutely contrived it is. For yeah. example, the entire story arc of this episode begins because the Atmon are running towards Bootmon in, like, a threatening manner, which is something they would never, ever do. And uh, Hajime has inserted a emergency escape pro- program into Bootmon that will automatically trigger whenever he feels threatened, and Hajime didn't mention this to them before they go searching for him. Yes, but which- I still feel like this is because Hajime is evil. Well, no, but... There's no like there's no series of events here which makes those all together make sense, I don't think. Even if he's evil, right? If he's evil, he wants them to find Bootmon. So he'd tell them. Okay, I see your point. And like he would or if he wanted Bootmon to escape, he wouldn't have had that conversation at the end. Yeah. So who's your favourite character? Because mine's always going to be Astra whenever we have an episode that focuses sort of almost on him or has him being cool in the fight. So Astra and Musimon are great, and I love them. Um, um, I really, like, I just didn't care for this episode. I found Hajime such a, a weird, like, uber character. L- like, legitimately a Mary Sue character. Like, mm. He actually has a bunch of the characteristics of one. Um, but, I don't know, no one stood out to me as being even vaguely interesting this time around. I like caught Ray. Up, man? Because he's an You're caught astronaut? Up, man. Well, I think we always pop for Caught Up Man. I have no idea why. It's such a, like a, a, a small little running gag, but I love it so much. I really do. Uh, miscellaneous bits. I thought that the the festival being the uh, festival of the broken electronic devices was pretty cool, but for some reason it reminded me a lot of Higurashi. So it's just like electronic devices when they cry or useless devices when they cry. It just reminded me so much of that. I guess it's because it's a festival and there's, like, a lake. I just really like Higurashi, okay? I've picked that up in my years. In, in your years of I've... me not shutting up about it. Exactly. What were your miscellaneous bits? Any at all? Um, um, I liked more or less the bit where uh, Bootmon's flying through the AR fields, turning everything on. Oh, yeah, that, like, that, that was cute. Yeah, no, I, I, liked, I liked that bit as well. That was pretty cool. And then it happens again, at the, presumably, at the end. Presumably. See, I wanted him to go back past every everything he'd just gone past. And, you know, everything's been turned off. Everything's been solved. And then he just turns everything on again. I, I wanted that. I wanted the extra, like, three minutes of that happening again. The problem is that while it's a good, it's a good gag that went too far, like, things that were already on can't be turned on more. The train that's waiting people people up <laughs> is already on. Going forward doesn't mean it's on now. It just May- means maybe it's when, a when, when, function. Maybe when the conductor got off, he turned it on, off, maybe? What? No. Because it can, the conductor's not on because he's running after the train and it's kind of a funny bit. And he says, wait, no, I'm the conductor. But it was it's already on. Mm. It doesn't change anything. Do you have any more miscellaneous bits? Um, the... The festival itself is really weird. They worship a broken iPhone. Yes. No, that is, that is quite weird. And it's very much, look at these millennials eating their chocolate banana and worshipping a broken iPhone. But also, it's in like an old-fashioned temple. Yeah. It's, it's, re- it's like legitimately very, very odd. It is. It is. It is odd. Do you want to go on to my ranking and to, to know what I ranked this episode? Sure. Let's go right ahead. We've been recording I, this for I, nine minutes. <laughs> I Well, that's that's because like... With with Atmon, with with our coverage of Atmon, with our episodes, like they're they usually if, if they're a good episode, we go through the entire synopsis because that's our favorite favorite parts, yeah. and it just happens to be the whole episode. And if the episode's bad, we'll complain about it. But this was such like a mid level episode. It was like, well, it, it existed and it wasn't terrible. I wasn't bored, but at the same time, there wasn't a lot of things that like I, I popped for. So this actually, out of my ranking, is 19th. I think my problem with it 
generally, which pushes it down a lot for me, is like you can feel the series being like, yeah, we're just not going to do anything today. Yeah, and it's you can feels, feel it, and it's so it feels, close to the end. But yeah, it feels weird to have a filler episode so close to the end, as you just said. It just it feels like uh, isn't aren't there important things that you're meant to be doing? We only have what a couple of episodes left. The kids, I think this is this is going to be like a fifty episode season. And we're up to episode 44. The kids legitimately forgot what they were going to do. They're there for Bootmon. They're like, yeah, but people are sad they're not going to have fireworks. So I guess we can just leave this whole turning all the humans in the world into apps thing for, you know, mm. the day. And we'll go solve this problem instead. Yeah, and they effectively pause the plot. Yeah. They just go, oh, plot's happening. Nope, pause. Also, here's a question yeah? just about Atmon and in general sort of Monster of the Week shows that I've always wondered about. Usually, in these kinds of shows, the Monster Week shows up and is dealt with pretty much in the same day, you know, because it immediately comes to the attention of the heroes. What if it didn't? (laughs) Like, what if Useless Mon in this case, Trash Mon, whatever it was called... Like, what if the kids just didn't go to this festival? It would would it have wandered around for like weeks, blowing up the entire city? See, I actually think so. I feel like a lot, and this happens in a lot of media, not just at Mon, but you know, the protagonists are always just in the middle of the plot, basically, and they happen to just walk into what's happening. They totally justify that in Buffy with the whole Hellmouth thing, and also yeah. like, um, the a lot of the threats are so large it is impossible for them not to notice. But the thing about Atmon is that it is based on the idea of small inconveniences to technology localized in certain areas. Yeah, and like Leviathan's plan is presumably covering the entire world, right? Absolutely. So why why are these these problems in Australia? Do us does Australia not have Atmon? No, are it they have, not doesn't have iPhones. We haven't developed. Yeah, we don't have the L virus shown to be infecting anywhere else. Besides, within Tokyo, for some reason, like what about the rest of Japan? I'm Japan's a big place. Tokyo about, is a big place. What about where the other Apuyama members are? There are four hundred of them. Why? Why doesn't anything ever happen to the rest of the world? Why is Leviathan explicitly just in Japan? It's it's strange, but the, it's where the protagonists are. And honestly, I'm surprised that Haru said. Hey, we're always really lucky that we happen to be exactly where is Leviathan's doing some things, right? Yeah, uh, I'm trying. Like, I'm trying to think where the, why they justify all of the time that they're there, and I can't actually think of one. Yeah, well, I think that's it for that episode. It does. Seem- it was okay. It it was it was all right. It wasn't terrible. Yeah, it, was, it was. I guess. Fine. I guess above average in my ranking, which is not bad. So it is. That means it's below the finest score may report. Gourmet at Perorimon and above Reclaim the Seven Code Atmon Showdown, Ultimate versus Ultimate. I will take your word for it. So next week we're watching a very excited episode and I'm very I'm anticipating the next episode. It is a mighty clash. Gatchmon versus Agumon. It's gonna be another filler episode. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it is one hundred percent another filler episode. Well, I haven't seen it yet, but I'm just assuming it is. But I don't care. I'm looking forward to it, okay? Sure, fine. So you can email us at lostintranslationmon at gmail.com or you can comment on this episode on messages on SoundCloud. You can follow us on at Translationmon on Twitter and you can find us on Lost in Translation on Instagram, Tumblr, Facebook and YouTube. We have a discussion thread on With The Will and a Reddit thread in the Atmon subreddit and would appreciate it if you were to review us on iTunes, Stitcher or whatever podcast listening service that you use. And we have a website and you can check out our Apple ranking also, once again, sorry for the bad audio quality, as I said, Skype and recording, and, like, it, it is bad, bad quality just on Skype, and we both, like, Jay's using his gaming headset, I'm just using the one microphone. It is, uh, it, it's not great, but hopefully we can endeavour to do better when we're both not contagious. You can also donate to our Patreon, which is linked in the description, from as little as a dollar a month. A dollar a month gets you access to our listener Slack chat group, but higher levels get you things like exclusive notes information, early and unedited episode recordings, the ability to suggest discussion topics, Skype calls with May and Jay, and more. And thank you to our current Patreon supporters, Sam Krieger, who has a podcast called The Moncast, which talks about Pokemon and Digimon, Stevie, who is also Stevie Padamon on Tumblr and is currently taking commissions, Wu Qinglong, who you can find at uh, twitch.tv forward slash Wu Qinglong, Metal Mamemon, Joe, Penguin Mage, Anime Guy, who is Anime Guy Kurosaki and the number one on YouTube, Chakmon, Ishpal Bamba, Hiro Lado, who is at Hiro Lado on Twitter, Jason Morosky, Ryuchi, uh, who is Frost Magic on Archive of Our Own, Stephen Reeves, 
who's at Wildwing64 on Twitter, Kaitawashi, Mac, Noam, Riku, Chisai, who you can follow at Chisai236 on Tumblr, Corey, Kyle, Delady Bugman, whose anime blog you can find at baguburagu.wordpress.com, Small Wolfie, who is on Tapastic as Small Wolfie and has a comic there called Eden of Melancholy, Tom, Glitchgoat, Azra McCool, Nicholas, Gene Hackmon, Matthew, Anthony, who is at AntoClassic on Twitter, Lismet, who is a Lechmon on Tumblr, Sithobi, Ellie Vorg, who is Ellie Vorg on Tumblr, Sporky McFork and Spoon, Megan, and Kyliak. You can also donate to our PayPal for a one-off donation, which can be found linked in the description. It's paypal.me slash airdramon. Make sure let's know to the podcast. We'll see you guys next time. Bye! Bye.